Wahab Associate Professor, Department of Pharmacy, Quart University of Science and Technology. Our today topic is uh, liposome as a drug delivery system. It is the structure of liposome as we have discussed in our previous lecture about the liposome as a drug delivery system. So when we were discussing the differences between the liposomes and neosomes, so in case of uh, neosomes, we discussed that uh, uh, in the composition of the neosome, cholesterol, non-ionic surfactant, and non-charge uh, inducers are used. So the for in but in case of the liposome, instead of non-ionic surfactants. Uh, phospholipids are used. So, in the structure of uh, neosome, the non-ionic surfactants uh, consist of uh, single tail, while in case of the liposomes, the phospholipids are having two tails, one hydrophilic head and two tails. So, the contents which we are going to discuss in our today's lecture is definition, advantages, disadvantages of what? Of liposomes, structure and drug encapsulation of liposomes, type and sizes of liposomes, composition of liposomes, method of preparations, difference between neosomes and liposomes, which we have already discussed, applications of liposomes, marketed products and differences. So it is the structure of liposome it is a hydrophilic core as you can see over here these are the hydrophilic heads these and these are the hydrophilic heads of the phospholipid molecules as you can see over here it is a phospholipid molecule it is it is uh, the head and uh, the head containing uh, two tails these are the tails of phospholipid molecules and these are cholesterols which are used in the formulation of the liposomes. So you can see over here it is the phospholipid molecule, the polar portion and the non-polar portion. The non-polar portion is tail and the polar portion is head. So these are the heads and these are the uh, tails of phospholipid molecules and it is the structure of liposome so liposomes are artificial lipid based bilayered microscopic vesicle similarly like uh, neosomes but in case of neosomes the instead of uh, instead of the uh, phospholipids non ionic surfactants are used or liposomes are concentric bilayered vesicles in which aqueous volume is entirely enclosed by a membrane lipid bilayer, mainly composed of natural or synthetic phospholipids. Or liposomes or lipid vesicles are sealed sacs in the micron or submicron range dispersed in aqueous environment. These are the bilayer. It is a one layer and it is second layer. So therefore, these uh, microscopic vesicles are called bilayered microscopic vesicles because there are two layers. History of liposome. Liposome was first discovered by Alec Douglas Bingham, a British hematologist in 1961 at the Babraham Institute in Cambridge, England. Who for the first time discovered liposome? Alec Douglas Bingham. We are in the, uh, at the Babraham Institute, Cambridge, England, when in 1964, 61, sorry. He published his work in 1964. They were discovered when uh, Alec Douglas Bangham and his colleague R. W. Horn was testing a Neve electron microscope in the institute with a dry phospholipid and gram negative, gram negative stain. They found the bag like arrangement formed automatically, which was named as multilamellar 
smectic mesophase or bengosums by Alec Douglas Bengam. And there was one his colleague Gerald Weisman who, who suggested these phospholipid bilayer vesicle to be more user friendly and termed as liposomes. So the name liposome was given by this man, Gerard Westman. They found that on the hydration of phospholipid, it resulted in the formation of phospholipid bilayered vesicle, which resembles the structure of the cell membrane. Later on, it becomes a biodischarge component by synthesis for the drug delivery system because of its compatibility and its and its capability to enter both hydrophilic and lipophilic drugs. And we can say that liposomes similarly like neosomes we can use for the delivery of both hydrophilic and lipophilic drugs. In 1974, in 1964, Gregor Rydas proposed the use of liposome in chemotherapy. And liposome was considered as a good candidate because of safety, size, control, controllability, and easy functionalization. The study of polyethylene glycol long circulating liposomes began in 1990 because polyethylene glycol protein conjugation has improved the half life of protein. Pro, um, protein. Uh, liposomes. So the researchers has begun to conjugate polyethylene glycol to liposomes to prolong its half life. The development of long circulating polyethylene glycol liposomes is a major advantage in drug delivery, especially in cancer therapy. And CAM has shown that polyethylene liposome has improved efficacy, safety, and in vivo stability as compared to conventional delivery system. Polyethylene glycol can help its escape from the reticular endothelial system and reduce its distribution to different organs of the body. Hence, reducing the toxicity of cytotoxic drugs, liposomes are gaining the, their popularity due to their contribution to uh, varied areas like drug delivery, cosmetics, and the structure of the biological membrane. Liposomes are a term de uh, derived from the Greek word where lipos meaning fats and soma meaning body. So Eddie Alec uh, Douglas Bangham first described liposome in 1964 with his colleagues, sorry, 1961. His close colleagues Gerard Wiesman suggested the term liposome as we have already discussed that uh, this name was given by this person Gerard Wiesman and it is typographical mistake. Uh, uh, it was discovered in 1961 but published in 1964. Liposomes are colloidal particles formed when a phospholipid is hydrated in excess to water, resulting in the formation of liposomes of different sizes ranging from 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 micrometer in diameter. The creation of liposome has been one of the most important novel drug delivery systems and most studied by researchers because of its biocompatibility and biodegradability. Liposomes have gained lots of interest in advanced drug delivery as a carrier. The advancement of liposomal research is also because they mimic biological membrane. We can say that liposomes are similar like biological membrane which makes them uh, more versatile for study in various fields. They consist of an aqueous core entrapped by one or more phospholipid bilayer composed of natural or synthetic phospholipids. Liposomes which are composed of a natural phospholipid are non-toxic, non-immunogenic and biologically inert. Both hydrophilic and lipophilic drugs can be transported therein.
Drug targeting can also be achieved by surface modification, making it more localized to target disease tissue. We can say that uh, varieties of drugs like lupophilic drugs and hydrophilic drugs can be delivered by means of liposomes. Advantages of liposome. There are many drugs in the market which have good therapeutic activities but they are used in the uh, direst situation because of their poor pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamic activities. Drugs encapsulated in liposomes can be used regularly as, as its pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamic can be controlled. Some of the advantages of liposomes, liposomes are as you can see over here because liposome liposome provides selective passive targeting to tumor tissue like in this case liposomal doxorubicin increase efficacy and therapeutic index increase stability via encapsulation reduction in toxicity of the encapsulated agent side avoidance effect improved pharmacokinetic effects reduce um, sorry in uh, elimination increase circulation lifetime reduce elimination and increase circulation lifetime flexibility to couple with side specific ligands to achieve acto targeting to achieve acto these are the advantages of liposomes disadvantages of liposomes. all drugs delivery systems have faults same is the case of liposomes so there are advantages and disadvantages for all drug delivery systems so we can say that uh, from a disadvantages liposomes are not exempted as liposomes are required to enhance uh, and increase the efficacy of drug the cost as well as all the other implications thereof must be taken into account cost is an issue when it comes to phospholipid preparation because phospholipids are costly so therefore uh, liposomes are expensive this preparation is expensive to produce because of the costly raw material and equipment required for preparation liposomes are non-toxic but in case of cationic liposomes it tends to be toxic at higher concentration And there are some other problems which are related to um, liposomes like sterilization, short shelf life and stability, entrapment efficiency, removal from circulation by the reticular endothelial systems. So these are the also uh, the disadvantages of uh, liposomes. Sterilization, short life stability, entrapment efficiency, removal from circulation by the reticular endothelial systems. So, sterilization of liposome is a complicated process because it is unstable in heat and certain methods of radiation. Sterilization with chemicals may affect stability problem. The only sterilization method is a membrane filter that is capable to filter liposomes of size less than 0.2 micrometer. And this method does not filter viruses. Short shelf life and stability. It is very difficult to achieve the stability of liposome formulation due to chemical and physical degradation. Chemically, they are prone to oxidation and hydrolysis. So, hydrolysis and oxidation uh, are the main factors for the instability of liposomes. And they can physically fuse forming larger vesicles. It can be prevented by the addition of antioxidants such as tocopherol and the addition of cholesterol to avoid fusion. If we want to avoid the fusion aggregation of uh, liposomes uh, particles, so we can uh, incorporate the cholesterol to prevent the aggregation and also for the, to avoid the aggregation or collisions charged molecules are also incorporated in the formulation of uh, liposomes similarly for the uh, to prevent the oxidation uh, of the liposomes antioxidants such as tocopherols can be used 
Entrapment efficiency. The amount of drug a liposome can entrap is often low and sometimes leakage of drug takes place. So it is the disadvantage of liposome. Removal from circulation by the reticular endothelial system. Yes, the major drawback of liposomes as a drug carrier is that they are rapidly cleared by phagocytic cell of the mononuclear phagocytic system. So larger liposomes are eliminated from circulation faster than smaller liposomes. So pigilations can increase the cell life of liposome. In polyethylene glycols uh, are coated around the liposomes. So this process is called pigilations. So by means of this, we can increase the shelf life or the half life of the liposomes. Liposome formation and encapsulation of drugs. So it is the structures of the phospholipid uh, which is used for the preparation of the liposomes as you can see head and tails we have already discussed in our previous slides. So in this picture in this diagram you can see the different parts of the phospholipid molecules. So th these are by, uh, by uh, uh, layer vesicles you can see our these are the bilayer vesicle is either hydrophilic heads and uh, it the, it is the part uh, which contains the tails of the phospholipids and this it is also the tail part or we can say the hydrophilic part uh, a hydrophobic part you can see like this and it is the hydrophilic part the hydrophilic part consists of the head of the phospholipid molecules and the hydrophilic Phobic or lipophilic part consists of the tail of the um, phospholipid. So it is the bi bilipid, bilayer structures you can see over here. It is the, also the structure of the liposome. Uh, these are the drugs and these are the aqueous uh, compartment of the liposomes. These are the drug molecules which are uh, enclosed or encapsulated inside of the liposomes. Vesicles. The liposome vesicle derived from hydration of phospholipids, which are amphiphilic molecules endowed within the, uh, with a hydrophilic head group and two hydrophobic acyl chain as shown in the figure. Like you can see over there. These are the two acyl chains of the phospholipids. In aqueous media, phospholipids molecules self-assemble into a bilayer structure. Within the bilayer, phospholipid molecules or polar groups line up to form a water attracting surface like you can see this, like water attracting surface. Water attracting surface while their lipophilic chains face each other like you can see over here these are the lipophilic chains or lipophilic tails lipophilic portion of the uh, phospholipid molecules each other to yield a water free zone. On mechanical shaking or heating phospholipid bilayer continuously enclose the dispersing aqueous medium and form a vesicular uh, system. In this system hydrophilic groups of phospholipids are oriented towards the inner and outer aqua, uh, aqueous phase. This is the out, outer aqueous phase and it is the inner aqueous phase. These are the hydrophilic portion of the phospholipid. We can say these are the heads of the phospholipid molecules. Uh, outer aqueous phase while their hydrophobic tails are uh, centered within the, bi uh, the bilayer. This architecture underlines the ability of liposome to readily encapsulate encapsulate hydrophilic and hydrophobic material inside the inner aqueous core and the lipid bilayers respectively as shown in the figure over here. These are hydrophobic drugs and these are hydrophilic drugs. Hydrophilic drugs are uh, attached with the uh, head of the phospholipid molecule or we can say outside and inside of the liposomes because the outside and inside uh, of the liposomes um, are consist, uh, consisting on the uh, hydrophilic uh, 
heads and this area consists of on the hydrophobic or we can say the hydrophobic part the tail part of the liposomes it is also the structure of the liposomes you can see over here types and their typical sizes the liposome size can vary from very small 0.025 micrometer to large 0.2.5 micrometer vesicle liposomes are classified on their structure on their structure properties methods of preparation and composition and application their properties such as the size of liposomes number the position of lamella depend widely on the method of preparation types of lipid used and preparation condition of liposome these parameters influence the in vitro and in vivo characteristic of liposome the lip classification of lipo liposome based on structural properties based on liposomes preparation and based on composition and application as you can see over here there ties based on their typical sizes multilaminar vesicle more size is more than 0.5 micrometer oligolamellar vesicles size is 0.1 to 1 micrometer unilamellar vesicle all sizes ranges so small unilamellar vesicles 20 to 100 nanometer uh, multi uh, in medium size unilamellar vesicles large unilamellar vesicle more than 100 nanometers and joint unilamellar vesicle more than 1 micrometer multi vesicular vesicle more than 1 micrometer these are the different sizes the different types which are based on the typical sizes of the particles are the are the size of the liposomes type based on method of preparation reverse reverse uh phase evaporation method ya yeah, reverse phase evaporation method single or oligolamellar vesicle are made by this type of method the reverse phase evaporation method similarly multilamellar vesicle are made by reverse phase evaporation method uh, stable plurilamellar vesicles uh, frozen and thawed multilamellar vesicle these are the methods which are used for the preparation of the uh, liposomes vesicle prepared by extrusion method uh, dehydration rehydration methods these are the different methods which are used for the preparation of the liposomes so on the basis of the preparation methods the names are given to different types of the liposomes types based on the composition and application conventional liposomes physiogenic liposomes ph sensitive liposome cationic liposome long circulatory the we can say stealth liposomes immuno liposomes these are the different liposomes uh, composition as in the composition of liposomes phospholipids cholesterols and different charred molecules are used structural liposomes are spherical or multilayered so spherical vesicle made by the self assembly of diacyl chain phospholipids lipid bilayer in aqueous solution the bilayer phospholipid membrane has a hydrophobic tail and a hydrophilic head that leads to the formation of amphiphilic structure liposomes can be made from both natural and synthetic phospholipids lipids composition strongly affects liposomes characteristics that include particle size rigidity fluidity stability and electrical charge for example liposome formulated from natural unsaturated phospho phosphatidylcholine as egg or soya bean phosphatidylcholine provide highly permeable and low stable property so saturated phospholipid based liposome such as dipalmitoformetyl phosphatidylcholine lead to rigid and almost impermeable bilayer structure the hydrophilic group in the lipids may be negatively positively charged or zwitterionic both negative and positive charge in the in uh, charge in the same molecule sorry in the same molecule the charge of the hydrophilic group provide stability through electrostatic 
repulsion. The hydrophobic group of lipids varies in the acyl chain lane symmetry and saturation. The lipids that use in the liposome preparation may be classified as natural lipids and synthetic lipids. So natural the membrane bilayer of normal cells are mainly composed of glycoglycerophospholipids. Phospholipids are consist of a glycerol unit that is bonded to a phosphate group and two fatty acid molecules. The phosphate group can also be bonded to a small essential choline organic molecule. Natural phospholipids can be obtained from various sources such as soya bean, egg yolk. Phospholipids are classified as phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylethanolamine, phosphatidylserine, phosphatidyllinositol, phosphatidylglycerol, and phosphatic phosphatidic acid regarding to the polar head groups. Natural phospholipids are less stable than synthetic phospholipids. In liposomes preparation due to the unsaturated characteristic of the hydrocarbon chain. Synthetic lipids. Synthetic lipids are made by specific chemical modification to the non-polar and polar regions of the natural phospholipids. The modification enables an unlimited variety of well-defined and categorized phospholipids. The major saturated synthetic phospholipids are based on either using steric and alpalmatic fatty acid. Steroids. Steroids are hydrophobic lipids, consist of four ring structures. In which, in steroid means the cholesterols, which are used in the composition of the liposome. Cholesterol is the major steroid usually used in liposome preparation in a ratio less than 30% of the total lipids to improve liposome's rigidity and stability since it's incorpora it is incorporated in the liposo liposome lipid bilayer. So the percentage wise, the uh, <coughs> liposome ratio must be 30% of the total lipids. Surfactants. So, different surfactant molecules can also be used in the preparations of the uh, liposomes. So, these are the different surfactants which are also used in the preparations of the liposomes. But, uh, uh, as you can separate over it lies in liposome for penetration to modify the encapsulation and release properties of liposome through surface tension reduction between different immiscible phases. So in such in, in such cases, sometimes surfactants are also used in the preparation of the char molecules increase the stability of the vesicle by the addition of charge groups to the bilayer of the vesicle. They increase surface charge density and thereby prevent vesicle aggregations. Methods of preparation. These are the different methods and the same methods we can say that which these methods are also used in the preparation of the liposome. We have already discussed the different methods which are used in the preparation of liposomes uh, in our previous lecture uh, regarding the uh, lipos uh, neosomes as neosome as a drug delivery system. So in that lectures we have discussed about the different methods uh, which uh, we can also use in the preparation of the um, liposomes. Liposome can be formulated using different approaches. The process of liposome manufacture and the phospholipids type critically affects the final liposome characteristic. All the method for the preparation of liposome involves four steps. <sighs> Drying down lipids from an organic solvent dispersing the lipid in aqueous media, purifying the resultant liposomes, analyzing the final product. So these are the four steps which are used in all methods which are used in for the preparation of the liposomes. So liposome fabrication or form formulation process procedures can be classified into the first one, thin film hydration method. It is also called Benga method. Reverse phase evaporation method. Solvent injection method. 
डिटर्जेंट रिवोम रिमूवल मेथड डिहाइड्रेशन रिहाइड्रेशन मेथड हीटिंग मेथड पीयर जंपिंग मेथड माइक्रोफ्लूडिक चैनल मेथड एंड सुपर क्रिटिकल फ्लूडिक मेथड दीज आर द डिफरेंट मेथड्स विच आर यूज फॉर द प्रिपरेशन ऑफ द लिपोसोम्स सो द तीन फिल्म हाइड्रेशन मेथड इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड बेंगम मेथड also known as bengam method film hydration represent the simplest and oldest method used in liposome technology in this method lipids are firstly dissolved in a suitable organic solvent and lipids are firstly dissolved in suitable organic solvent which type of lipid phospholipids and dried on to yield a thin film at the bottom of the flask The obtained lipid film is hydrated using an appropriate aqueous medium to produce liposomal dispersion. After the formation of the thin film, then the next step is hydration. So for the hydration, appropriate aqueous medium is used. The structural organization of the formed vesicle can be affected by the hydration condition. A gentle hydration of the lipid film forms. joint unilamellar vesicle whereas a harsh hydration give rise to the multilaminar vesicle with poor size homogeneity which requires an additional down sizing step the most commonly used sizing method include probe and bathsonication if we want to bring homogeneity uh, a uniformity in the size so in that case what should be used probe and bath sonication that afford production of small unilamellar vesicle despite its higher effectiveness probe sonication is often blamed for potential contamination with titanium from the titanium based nozzle used for the mechanical agitation and production of local heat that can affect lipids and drug stability although the toe sonication methods produce bath sonication and probe sonication produce liposomes with identical characteristics the use of bath sonication remains a better option due to easy control of operational parameters so the operational parameters of bath sonications are easy or we can say if friendly to use as compared to probe sonication Another technique used for the liposome sizing include conjecture or extrusion of the liposome formulation through polycarbonate filter filters of defined pore sizes if we want to um, uh, resize uh, the liposomes we can also use the polycarbonate filters in these methods the number of extrusion cycle is the key parameter to control for effective homogenization so it is the simple method for the preparation of liposome so this method for the first time it was used by bengam and therefore uh, it is also called it is also known as a bengam method thin film hydration method is also known as bengam method here is the diagrammatic presentations of this bengam method and we have also shown this method in uh, uh neosome preparation instead of neosome you can also write over here the liposomes the same method which uh, which is used for the preparation of the neosome can be used for the preparation of the liposome and this method is also known as bengam method ether injection or solvent evaporation method so solvent injection methods these are also divided into two types like the ether injection method and ethanol injection method so in case of the liposome pre preparation it is the ether injection method solvent preparation in this method lipid dissolved in diethyl ether or ether methanol mixture is gradually injected in a aqueous medium containing drug at the temperature of 50 to 65 degree celsius centigrade uh, celsius or yeah degree centigrade or reduced pressure the removal of ether under vacuum result formation of liposome 
द मेन ड्रॉबैक ऑफ दिस टेक्निक इज द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ ए हेटरोजीनियस पॉपुलेशन ऑफ लिपोसोम्स सेवेंटी टू हंड्रेड नोनोमीटर एंड एक्सपोजर ऑफ लिपोसोम इन हाई टेम्परेचर ड्यूरिंग दिस मेथड आर ड्यूरिंग इन कैप्सुलेशन विच कैन हेम पॉड द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ लिपोसोम एथनोल इंजेक्शन मेथड टू अ बफर अ सोल्यूशन ऑफ लिपिड एथनोल इज इंजेक्टेड रिजल्टिंग इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द मल्टी लेमिनर विजिकल्स द ड्रॉबैक इज द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ हेटोरोजीनियस पॉपुलेशन ऑफ लिपोसोम and mostly the sizes different sizes of liposomes you can see 30 to 100 nm it is also difficult to remove ethanol from a soluble solution consequently increasing the chances for the inactivation of the biologically active macromolecules macromolecules over here if we want to load or we want to <coughs> target the different target area by means of the liposomes if we want to load that the the biological active macromolecules on the liposomes so there uh, will be chances of inactivations so these are the diagrammatic presentations of the different injection methods which we have already shown in our previous lectures uh, about the neosome sonication method prosonication method and basonication method these are the different the two methods which are used for the preparation of the liposome this is the most widely used method for the preparation of small uninamular vesicle from multilaminal vesicle prepared from the hand shaking method and roti evaporator method there are two types of sonication method used in the preparation of small unilaminal with prosonication method and basonication method the it is a diagrammatic presentation these are the picture of the uh, it is a picture of the probe sonication and it is the picture of the bath sonication sonicator reverse phase evaporation technique it is also used for the preparation of the neosome so the same method we can also use for the preparation of the liposome applications of liposome various application of liposome formulation is as you can see our site avoidance delivery site specific targeting intracellular drug delivery sustained release drug delivery reduce toxicity gene del gene delivery ocular therapy pulmonary application cancer therapy arthritis etc these are the applications of liposomes marketed products these are the different marketed products which are available which are approved by fda and available in the market uh, embosomes uh, dono zomes doxel vasodine deposite myosate lipoplatin these are the different uh, marketed products available on the market evaluation and characterization of uh, sorry uh, of liposomes not lipo neosomes these are liposomes these the same methods which are used for the characterization and evaluation of the uh, neosomes can be used for the evaluation or characterization of the liposomes like uh, dls diameter laser scatter cms scm scanning electron microscope afm atomic force microscope STMM scanning tunneling microscope HPLC high performance liquid chromatography these are the different methods or different techniques which are used for the characterization and evaluation of the liposomes and neosomes uh, it is not neosome it is the liposomes but it is typographical mistakes so we can say the same methods which are used for the characterization and evaluation of the neosomes can be used for the characterization and evaluation of the liposomes these are differences between the liposome and liposomes we have already discussed in uh, our previous lecture uh, neosome as a drug delivery system about the differences between the liposomes and neosomes these are the difference between liposomes and lipos neosomes the differences uh, thank you so much stabilis uh, allah hafiz assalam alaikum